Hey everybody, it is always me, Kelly, and it has been a minute or several since I've been out here. I haven't done any cruising with Kelly, haven't done any walking with Kelly, haven't shared any perspectives with Kelly. Um, today is August 17th, 2020, and I just thought I would take this time while I'm decompressing for the day. Um, so it's been one of those days. It's been a Monday. Man, has it been a Monday. So as I'm sitting here ready to call it whatever, um, let me tell you a little bit about how Monday went. So I've been stressed anyway, just because anybody that knows me knows that I need to stay busy and I usually keep motivated by outreach and tapping into um, serving and stuff like that. And yeah, I've been serving. I do Tuesday night motion kids. Love them. They are absolutely awesome as is uh, our, our um, other team members that step up. But, you know, when you go from five days a week working anywhere from nine to sometimes even 15 hours a day, seriously, um, because it just doesn't turn off to um, volunteering evenings sometimes and, uh, on weekends and you're always gone to where all you do now is just kind of hang out, um, kind of take on projects. So to keep myself busy, I started, gosh, was it in May? I started hand painting the outside of my three bedroom, two path, two car garage house. And I'm almost done. I really am almost done. Why did I do it hand painting? Um, well, one, because I don't mind painting. I like painting. Um, and it gives me something to stay focused on and decompress and stuff like that. So um, all but the end walls, um, I hand painted. And uh, took me a little bit. And let me tell you, painting in August in Florida, in between the rain, that in itself was a project, is a project. So let me tell you, I won't say don't ever do it. I am not a professional painter, but, and, and I'm probably a little more messy than I should have been, but it looks good, the parts that I have done. I have one main wall left on the end cap um, I did go and get a sprayer, a paint sprayer, so I could do those because they were high and I couldn't see myself up on a six foot ladder reaching and risking trying to um, get that high up. So I did get a sprayer and I, I did the one end and what I couldn't reach with the sprayer because I just wouldn't get up on the rocks on the top of the six foot ladder, um, I, I rolled the rest. So that's, that's cool. I'm probably gonna have to get somebody um, to help me with the trim that's on the end caps because I'm not gonna climb up there. I'm too old for that crap. But anyway, um, using the sprayer, cut my time down in half, but man, because uh, it's a machine that my hands aren't used to. I ended up with blisters on top of both thumbs. But, uh, and I was going to, I was going to actually finish out the painting this weekend, but it's probably a good thing I didn't because between the allergies, the heat, I dumped it, jumped into my pool a couple of times and didn't necessarily have my earplugs in and I have an old injured eardrum and ended up with some uh, between allergies and, and the water getting in there, ended up with an inner ear infection. So it's probably a good thing I've taken a couple of days off besides the fact that <laughs> every time I went to go out there the past weekend, it would start pouring down. So I started on my trim. So what do I have left? My paint project because I get bored and I have to have things to do. Um, I have one end cap and then a little bit over top of the uh, garage because now I have the sprayer and then all of the rest of the trim. And I am pretty darn excited and pleased. And man, it looks so much better. So that is what I've been doing to try to keep myself focused and preoccupied. A lot of stuff going on, right? I mean, we're not, this whole new normal, we're still in the um, stay at home, um, work from home, shelter in place, COVID-19, pandemic. Um, you know, we can't go anywhere and do anything that we normally used to do. And we can take that for granted sometimes, right? Look at all the times we just get up and go, 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 and not even think twice 
And yeah, I'm not a germaphobe. I got my puppy here giving me some attention. He's not a puppy, he's my old man. Um, but I'm not a germaphobe, but yeah, I always, always pay attention and don't hug up on people I don't know, but I certainly hug up on people I do know. And I even miss that. So um, a little bit of readjustment and I thought I was dealing with it. And then I kind of got getting a little funky with this ear thing when it started uh, draining and all that. But I, I got some meds for that. And then uh, just the whole stress thing, my uh, oldest granddaughter went off to college and that was awesome. I am so proud of her having high honors, wonderful GPA. She's driven, she's got goals. She knows who God is. She knows right from wrong. She knows her choices and she's got an awesome head on her shoulders. So I'm pretty pleased, but we did good until she started crying when she was hugging me. And then I was like, oh God, don't, 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 don't turn that on. Don't turn that on. And then just other things trying to get things done, trying to help where you can and not, sometimes it's falling into that never being enough um, mentality, right? No matter what you do, it's never gonna be enough. Um, and then just even at times that some of this crap is getting old. Some of this crap is getting old. Some of the things that I do is getting old. Um, and where am I at today? Well, today was one of those Mondays. I haven't had one in a very long time, but it started out to be good. We've got um, some new migrations going on. And if you don't know what that means is that we're just merging into new computer systems. Um, my company was purchased back in January and we're rolling into the new process and the new tools and the new applications. So there's a lot with that. And of course, on those important days when there's a lot and you're trying to get a lot done and you're trying to do things and show things. And, and then we had that wonderful, loud storm that came through. And honestly, I didn't see a whole lot of rain, but my house was shaking and the lightning and my house lost power. And I went through all of the hurricane season since I've been here since 2014. And I've not once lost power like I did today. And unfortunately, what that means was um, it didn't strike my house, even though it was loud enough that it, it could have, but because of the power surge that was going on, blew out my modem and blew out my docking station for my uh, work laptop. So, uh, that meant I was down to a laptop with, and I work off of multiple screens because I'm always looking and pulling and doing stuff. Um, things shut down for a few hours. So uh, got back up and running. I uh, had to get in my car and drove up the spectrum, swapped out the modem, came back, got back on, worked with you know what I needed to do. And then after work went over and got a couple of technical things so that I could be up and running for tomorrow. Um, it can be stressful, right? If we let it, if we let it. So one of the things, um, I did get up and I took my walk. So I didn't, I got done making up time doing at least getting part of the stuff done that I had targeted to do today. I got that done. And then when I was done about 8.15, um, I went and, uh, did a nice little walk. So pretty mellow. I think I'll sleep okay tonight. We'll see. But one of the things that totally um, snuck away from me today was my morning devotional. And I got thinking about it because I, I had to come back and I was looking at it and I thought, well, maybe, maybe I'll share because I know we're all going through stuff, right? We're all going through changes. We're all going through the news and everything that's on it. We're all going through this election stuff. Um, we're all going through opinions. We're all going through those people that we see on the news or maybe we even encounter um, blocking roads because they're out there protesting something and they don't want to let anybody through. And it, we all have our own opinions now. And I can sit there and I can, I can point out opinions all day long. I can tell you how I feel all day long. I can tell you how easy it is to destroy friendships or um, ruin chances of any type of relationship because we let our opinions, we let our frustrations, we let our 
day to day get away from us and we forget. We forget that, that it's going to pass. No matter what it is, it's going to pass. Now, um, does that mean it makes it any less stressful? No. Does that mean when a newly married or not so newly married couple, but a young couple has their first child and it's a couple of weeks early and the baby's only two pounds, nine ounces, that the frustration and the worry, no matter if they're a faith believer or not, is not gonna be a heavy burden while they're trying to do their day to day in this new normal, in this COVID-19 to where we're lucky if something happens to somebody, you're lucky if you get a chance to get in to be with that person that you love at a facility or just anything, anything, people dying. So even, even what I read recently that when my brother had a neighbor, probably somebody my age, maybe a little older, maybe a little younger, doesn't matter. I mean, but had a neighbor that they would chat with at the mailbox and they would visit and, you know, uh, just kind of be neighborly. And they went down to do the routine and check the mail and the whole area was taped off with police tape. That one of their live-in roommates, I don't know who it was, but somebody that was staying at this lady's house, um, they were looking for them because the lady was brutally murdered and her car was missing and all that. So things happen close to home. It makes you wonder, it makes, you know, it makes even the biggest dudes that don't worry about much stop and think, or it should. It makes people that are out there that are seeing and hearing their neighbors overdosing or seeing and hearing loved ones overdosing or seeing and hearing someone in a horrible car accident because somebody was under the influence or seeing and hearing all of this negative stuff it eventually weighs in on you and then then you don't even get to the the, the point i mean if you if you really want to take it further and, and this mind of mine is starting to go right so what about the day-to-day -day? what about the people that are really trying to make it and really trying to do good and really trying to just make it through day to day and it doesn't matter it does matter let me say that it does matter if they're a christ follower or not but it doesn't matter to me but we're talking about good souls that have never done anything to anyone but yet they get taken advantage of they get used and abused and even our children right look it in the news look at how many different movements we have now trying to save our children because of sickos in the world. Now, I'm a, I'm a Jesus freak all the way. I believe that he listened, he obeyed, he followed, and he got, took every single thing that the world gave him. And he was nailed to that cross and he was tortured and tormented and he died and he rose again so that we could have life. I believe that. I also believe that the only way to get to God is through Jesus Christ. But does that make me perfect? No, does it make my thinking perfect? <laughs> does it make people think that I'm crazy? Sure, but people that know me for any length of time know that I was crazy long before that. Um, but the bottom line is, is does it matter if they're walking the walk or if they're just downright good people? everybody's going through something even the people that are out there doing harm and bad things they're going through something they went through something to get to the point to where they're at now does that validate any reason for why they do things why they um, take advantage of people why they you know do anything I'll never make I'll never make a justification for why somebody does something. I can't answer that. I do know that we're all going to be judged. And I am the first one to say, you harm my children. I'll be the first one to say, line you up. When I see and hear anybody taking advantage of children or the elderly, I would 
prefer to line them up for them. And I have to ask for redemption all the time. And thankfully, I've grown up over the years because I used to be the first one to jump up in somebody's face and, and try to force my opinion on it. Was I a Karen? No. Um, but I don't like bullies. I don't like liars. I don't like thieves. You don't owe me anything in this life. Nobody owes me anything in this life. So when people are not who they say they are, when people are out there taking advantage for their own personal gain instead of working for something that they should be working for. And I get that everybody's circumstance is different because I know what it comes, I know what it's like to come from nothing and work your way up. That I do. But it doesn't give anybody the right to get out there and try to take advantage and try to have it all right now and not work for it. And it doesn't make it right that when you have friends and loved ones that are out there and they're chasing paper and they're chasing dreams and they're throwing their life away for something that's temporary, it doesn't make it right if we don't speak up and say something. Man, it's a, a fine line and we all get to choose. We all get to choose. So, yeah, I was panicking today when all of the craziness happened and my technical stuff went really south and uh, trying to get back online. The noise in my house because of uh, pets and kids. And, and it's just like, I was like, man, it reminded me. I am blessed I got up another day. I made it through the day, but I don't have to be doing what I'm doing, but there's reasons why I do what I do and I own those. Whenever I choose to do something, I own the results, even if it doesn't turn out the way I would like it. And in a lot of cases, when I don't understand what the result really will be, when I can't see it, when I can't kind of control it, then I try to shut it down. It's like, no, uh-uh. That doesn't make sense. Too good to be true. This, that, whatever. But this morning, in this crazy messed up mind of mine, that little mind maze that dumps out, and anybody that reads anything I write, and I write every day unless something is really bothering me, and then, or I just need a break, or I'm away from the computer. Um, <clears throat> it's not too often that I actually don't write something for my daily blog pieces of me over time always me Kelly but um, one of the devotions that I read this morning and it's just been appropriate um, I want to read it to you it's August 17th this is out of Jesus calling enjoying the peace in his presence by Sarah Young and he brought me back to it again tonight because even through all the chaos today even through all the uncertainty all the things that I don't know how are going to turn out all of the uncertainty of I don't know when things are going to get back to normal so I can go see my family or my mother or my, you know, pops, my son, my daughter-in-law, all those, you know, the, the family and friends that I have up that I was supposed to go see up north. I never got a chance to do it because life changed, right? All the chaos, all the sickness, all of the man, I just need a break moments or I don't need to be doing this moments or anything sorry about that I had a dog that had to go out <clears throat> even with the zoo that I have God um God called me back so Jesus calling enjoying peace in his presence in Sarah Young and this one was find me in the midst of the maelstrom sometimes even sometimes events whirl around you so quickly that they become a blur whisper my name and recognition that I am still with you without skipping a beat in the activities that occupy you you find strength and peace through praying my name later when the happenings have run their course you can talk with me more fully, except each day, just as it comes to you. 
Do not waste your time or energy wishing for a different, a different set of circumstances. Instead, trust me enough to yield to my design and my purposes. Remember that nothing can separate you from my loving presence. You are mine. And that's Jesus. That's Jesus. So one of the other things I want to do is they give me a couple of little um, devotionals. And I don't have my system up, so I just need to go to my Bible real quick so I can read them. So in the midst of everything that swirls around us, even like today, even with it booming and shaking the house and power going off and me jumping up and shutting off my AC unit so it didn't get knocked out and then losing technical stuff and wondering, how am I going to get this stuff done? I got to, I got to be on top. I've got to keep moving. We got this, you know, it's a new company. It's a new this, it's a new that. There's always something to be stressed for. And I, I can tell you that because I'm stressed a lot. <laughs> I try not to be, you know, because I can't change it. And I think I said it, you know, life for me is not exactly where I would desire it to be. But I am blessed every day he gets me back up. And every day that he lets me make it through another day, I am blessed. No matter if I lose power, I do this, I do that, I end up with this, or I end up with that. Perspective is everything. Blessings come in an abundance of ways. Now, I was going to try to get out and do one of these the other day, but like I said, my ear has been funky, and it um, truly has not really been good for me to try to talk because it was been plugged up I couldn't hear so bear with me as I find Philippians 2 9 11 2 9 through 11 Ephesians past one. Okay, so I need my bright light because so verse two, nine through eleven. Therefore God elevated him to a place of highest honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord so whispering his name is nothing me coming back to him is just a way that Jesus is going to allow me to sleep peacefully tonight and not worry about the little things that are churning in this little mind of mine and why am I sharing because maybe you're going through stuff as well. Maybe you've got your overload of news or overload of can't stand to be still and not doing the routine that we're so used to doing or tired of hearing about the people down the street or the bad things that happen. Give it to God. Reach out, reach up. Have that personal one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have to go to a church building. God lives within us if we let if we let him. And yeah, when you surround yourself up by the body of believers, the hands and feet, and start doing good things because it does something for you, not because of what you can get from it. It's an amazing thing. It's an amazing blessing. find Isaiah in this Bible. So I've gotten so used to being on my phone and doing everything technology wise. 
I don't even know where things are in the field Bible. But I am not a scholar when it comes to this stuff anyway. I can tell you the blessings that I've had. So I'm looking for Isaiah 43, 1. Isaiah 43, 1, but now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Then, oh, I'm going on to two, so I might as well read two as well. So, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up by the flames, will not consume you. And three is, for I am, your, I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours. Because you are precious to me, you are honored in love. I love you. Now, that is Isaiah 43, 1 through 4. So it's an amazing thing. I mean, I was only going to read 43, 1, but here I am being reminded that no matter what's going on, God's got this. God's got this. Don't be afraid to take chances. And I say that because I say it for me too. And the chances could be different. The things that might be holding me back, I don't have a lot of fear about anything. But I certainly pull away and I back down if I can't see something right in front of me to see how true it is. And when it comes down to helping, I help people regardless of who they are. And that... I'm learning <laughs> I'm learning um, I cut myself short all the time because I help people that don't need to be helped and I've been doing that all my life I've gotten better I've gotten worse um, it's not about keeping statistics it's really not if you've been blessed and you have a voice and you have eyes and you have movement use it use it and shine the light for someone else. Let's do this. When things are hard, pray more and teach yourself to worry less. Now, I say that knowing that today I was in a funk. That's all I can say. And it's not that I was panicked that things wouldn't get fixed or it's something that oh my gosh but it was the moment of I have something to do and I don't know what the outcome will be yet because I don't quite know what the future holds for a lot of things why in 2020 do I care about the future do I want God to come wash this world clean this land clean and heal everything oh yes 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 for me for so many so many suffering but if he doesn't and he keeps getting me back up he keeps getting you back up don't sweat the small stuff there's always going to be something out stay smart stay vigil stay healthy stay your distance if that's what's needed enjoy life whether it's meditating reading a book painting a house by hand until you can get back to the things that really fed your spirit me it's being surrounded up by music being surrounded up by my my teams of people that just worship god you who knows what that is we'll get through it just be smart about it be healthy about it and please always always pray harder
When things are hard, pray harder. Go face down. Meet Jesus right where you are. Circle up. Tap into podcasts. Tap into Christian music. Tap into whatever you need to to help feeding your spirit and start shining. And if you can't find a light to help you become a light. Father God, thank you for letting me have this time to just uh, rattle on and ramble on. And I just uh, lift all of my connections up, no matter who they are and what they're going through to you, Lord. And I do pray that your will come wash through this land because, God, we need you. We need you in our political systems. We need you in our leadership. We need you in our hospitals. We need you in our families. We need protection, Lord, guidance and protection. We need these young minds that are out there getting ready to take on these challenges to do something and be something great for others. We need you, Lord, to guide them, protect them, and help heal them. And right now, for me, Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you for lifting me up. Thank you for giving me the end of this day to close out with prayer. Um, I am going to stop this now because my crew is telling me it's enough. So everybody stay blessed. Know that no matter what happens in this world, you are worth more than anything, anything, anything that anybody could give or take. All right. Peace out. Till next time.